So here's what to expect from the session today. So I'm going to talk about why you care about Instagram, why bother doing Instagram marketing when you're also doing a million and one other things as a food enterprise. And then I'm going to run through some tips of how to approach your Instagram marketing. And this will be applicable if you're not currently using Instagram uh, as a food enterprise. So it will give you everything you need to know to get started. But then also if you are using it already, it will give you some um, areas that you can improve what you're doing as well. So different things to think about that you might not have thought about before. Um, and then I'm going to go into a little bit about what the algorithm is and some content creating tips. And then we're going to be speaking with Kate from Kent Food Hubs, um, who's going to be sharing her experience with this uh, really useful uh, platform as well. And then we're going to have a nice Q&A. So to get started, why Instagram? Why care about Instagram? Um, Instagram is a really useful platform and social channel for your food enterprise. And the reason why is that it has a higher engagement rate than any other social platform. And it also generates four times as many interactions than Facebook. So I'm not saying that it's better than Facebook because Facebook is a great uh, social media platform to drive traffic to your shop front and to get people to actually take action to shop with you. But Instagram has loads of other really amazing benefits in that it's the best social platform to be creating conversations. And I would say that it's the best platform for brand awareness as well. Um, and also and some other useful statistics about why you should consider using Instagram for your food enterprise is that 80% of users of Instagram follow a business and 72% of Instagram users have shopped with a business after seeing them on Instagram. So it's uh, some stats that might change your mind if you haven't looked at using this platform yet. So the first tip that I'll give for using Instagram is to, if you're just starting, think about these things as you're starting, but if you're already using it, maybe go through this list and just check all of these boxes and just check that you're optimized for each of these different points. So first of all, the, the one of the most important things is to make sure that you have a business profile. Um, and I will include a link on the steps to do that. It's a really simple process to do that. And the reason why you want to make sure you have a business profile is it opens up some extra options for you using Instagram that will help you to get actual results for your food enterprise from Instagram. And also importantly, it gives you access to Instagram insights as well. So I'll be sharing these slides after the session and you'll see here that there's some hyperlinks that you can click on and find out more information about each of the points. Um, and this is a guide to Instagram insights, which will help you get started with this. So today's session is more of a kind of overview for actual kind of practical how to do these things. I'll share um, advice on that in the event pages afterwards. And also these slides will give you more guidance. If you want an actual kind of practical, how do I do these things? Sometimes I do these lunchtime um, workshops where it's much more kind of hands-on and I'll show you literally how to do a thing if you don't know already. Um, the other tip um, when you're looking at how your Instagram is set up is to make sure that you've optimized your name and usernames for search. And the reason why is that Instagram essentially acts like a search engine. And so if you optimize your name and username for search, you are enabling your customers or potential customers to find you. So it might be an idea to have a think about what you call yourself on Instagram and what either your name or your, your username is. So you can maybe add something which will help people local to you find you. So sometimes it's quite useful if you've got a short hub name or a short uh, business name to add the location, particularly if you're just targeting a local market. Um, and the other thing is to really consider your bio. And that's the short description that you have on your page that describes who you are and what you do. It's worth taking the time to write something here that will really speak to your customer group. So knowing your customers think about what will appeal to them. It could also be informative, like what, you know, where are you based, what do you do? And um, also maybe I'll share some links to Food Enterprise in the event page after the session to give you some examples of what effective buys for a food enterprise looks like. But it's just worth spending a bit of extra time here and just really optimize your profile. Um, Include a call to action as well. So once you've set up, if you've set up your page as a business profile, you can put a link in um, and that will can be a direct link to take people to your shop or whatever is the main action you want people to take. Make sure the link in your bio is the main action that you want people to take. 
Um, you could try Linktree as well for additional actions. So there's two different kind of counts of thought here. If you use Linktree, so Linktree is essentially a way that you can, you, are, you can only have one link in your Instagram bio. So Linktree is a way of people will then click on that link and Linktree then gives you an option to add more links. So more options for, for your audience on Instagram to take an action that you want them to take. Um, so you might want to just keep it really simple and just always take people directly to your shop and then they can interact with you there and then maybe be taken on further journeys, i.e. to sign up with your mailing list or other actions you want them to take on your shop front or have a link tree which gives people more options. So there's two thought counts here. Keep it really simple and just have the main link, the main action you want people to take as your link or if you want to offer more options, use link tree. Sometimes, I mean, I personally always think that um, if you're a food enterprise, the, the simpler, the better. Like always use for the link in your bio, the, the main action that you want your customers to take rather than taking them in too many different directions. And that would be to your shop front for the best actual results. So I'm gonna talk here a little bit about the algorithm before I talk, uh, give you a few tips on creating content for Instagram. And the reason why is that the algorithm controls uh, what posts users see on Instagram. And it's a well-known statistic that only around 20% of your audience will be shown a post that you post. So the, 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 the uh, Instagram has revealed that the algorithm focuses on three main points when it essentially decides what posts to show a user. Um, and it the three main points are your relationship to the user, it's the timeliness of the post, and the interest level of the post. So it's like relationship, timeliness, and interest. So I don't think there's anything else I want to say about that. And so essentially what it does is it organizes. So all of the posts will be shown at some point, but as you can imagine, if someone's following a lot of people, the list of posts on their feed can be really long. So what the algorithm does is it organizes the posts in the feed according to those three principles, the timeliness, the interest, and the relationship in relation to the post. So the relationship is like your relationship with the poster. Have they liked your post before? Have you spoken to them in your messages? Do you have a relationship with that person? The, the, the better the relationship, the more likely it is that they'll see your post. So this is why it's so important to interact with people and be sociable on Instagram. The other point is the timeliness. So when someone looks at their feed, they'll see at the like timeliness is taken into consideration of like how soon, how recently was that post posted? Um, and the other one is interest. So what interest has been shown in that post so far? And the algorithm is really smart and that can measure the amount of time that people have spent looking at a post. Um, and yeah, so it's always good to think about how to make sure like your posts are, interesting and engaging and also promoting engagement with that post and I'll give you some tips on how to do that and how to rank better with these three points as we go. Let's check, is everything you want to say here? Cool. So here's some tips and so for the relationship part and the interest part before you post anything on Instagram spend about 30 minutes if you can or even 50 minutes whatever time you have 10 minutes, just spend some time prior to posting, building attention through taking community activity. And what I mean by community activity is interact with people who follow you on Instagram. And the reason why is it ticks the, um, the relationship box, because if you've liked someone's post, then it, in the algorithm kind of logs that you have a relationship with them. And so it's more likely to show them your post when you actually post it. So that's a really good tip. And then also when you, if you like or comment on someone's post, it's also more likely that you'll be top of mind for them, which means they're more likely to interact with your post. And for every interaction with your post, it ranks it better on the interest metric because more people have shown an interest by liking your post. So it's this kind of like self-fulfilling kind of positive cycle of building this, um, how, you, how your post ranks with interest and relationship, which means that more people will see it higher in their newsfeed, which means more people will be likely to see it. Um, you can go, a quick tip for this is you can go to your last post, check out who has liked that post, and then go through the list of everyone who's liked your last post and just 
do a quick interaction with them, like their latest post or something like that. Um, also, another thing is to use multiple images in a post, because as I said, mentioned before, the algorithm monitors how much time is uh, spent on a post. So if you have more than one image on a post, like essentially, you know, you see those slider posts where you can click on the button, like the arrow, and you can see more than one image in the same post. That means that someone is spending more time on that post and the algorithm recognizes that and then essentially awards that image, that post a higher ranking according to interest. Okay, I hope all of that makes sense so far. Um, and I guess the main point that I wanna summarize here is just be sociable on Instagram. It's much more important here than it is on Facebook, for example. So you wanna follow with anyone that follows you who is relevant. Um, don't worry about vanity metrics on Instagram, leave that to the influencers. If a customer follows you, follow them back because you're building this relationship, you're building a community on Instagram and this will end up benefiting you in the long run as you're building these actual relationships with people in this online space. So don't be afraid to follow people back, um, engage with other people. And if anyone leaves a comment um, on your post, try and respond to everything that you can. And it's much more important here on Instagram to be doing these activities than other social platforms. So it's really a place where you wanna be sociable. So, and then next thing I wanna mention, just checking time. So I've got some more minutes. So consistency is also really important on Instagram and consistency doesn't just help you with the algorithm. Um, it also helps you to generate trust with the people who follow you on Instagram. So you wanna think about the consistency in the look of your profile, um, consistency in, the, in message. So what are you saying on Instagram? So, you know, try and kind of post about consistent things. Don't suddenly throw in something that's completely unrelated to food or um, if you're talking quite a lot about sustainability, then that's okay. But it's, again, if you like, yeah if, try and keep it consistent don't suddenly start talking about something completely unrelated like i don't know like american politics or something if you're a uk food hub um and because you want to consistently post um and what i mean by your grid is posting posts to your to your own page your feed you want to do that two to three times a week if you can help if, if you can um the key here is to be consistent if you can only post once a week that's okay, the most sustainable, like you wanna make this sustainable for you, it's better to be posting something than nothing, but just make sure you're posting every week. So you don't wanna post like three times a week and then not post for a month, because this is like, um, it's not great with the algorithm because you're not actually showing up in the space, the algorithm has less to go on about whether you're a profile of interest or, and it's also like not good for your followers who are engaging with you in this space, because it's like a subtle kind of just keep showing up because otherwise it can impact um, a, in a subtle way your followers trust of you. Um, and also you wanna be posting about three story posts per day. Again, the best social media strategy is the one that's sustainable for you. So post three stories a day or as many days as you can. Um, and story posts are posts that last only 24 hours. And I'll maybe show you one of that they you know when you go to the top of your news feed and you see the kind of the circles at the top and they're these like short videos that's what a stories post is um and i'll share steps on how to start with stories if you haven't already um but they're really important because they really help you to um to reach people because even the place that they show it's not you don't have to scroll down to find them they're always at the top um of your feed whenever you know so as a user whenever you go to instagram stories are right across the top they're one of the first things that you see um, so they're a really good place to reach people some people only interact with instagram by looking at stories and don't ever scroll down their news feed so there's some evidence suggests that's how some people use instagram so it's really important to be showing up there and that can be as simple as sharing your posts to your stories and again, I'll show, share um, all these how-tos after the session um, for the actual kind of nitty gritty of how to do the thing or come to a lunchtime workshop. Um, but yeah, it's really important to share every post you post to your story. So it gives you more chance of people to see the post that you've posted. Just every time you do that, it's, it's a good thing to do. And if you're stuck on things to post, for you, I mean, the important thing is to show up for posting stories, but if you're stuck on something to share, 
Um, you can share other people's posts as well. And you can share your suppliers' posts to your stories. So this is a way that you can also be quite sociable on Instagram. And it's like, if you're sharing someone else's post to your stories, it's, it's giving them some social love and maybe they return the favor, but then also you're supporting your suppliers or relevant businesses or relevant ent like organizations. Maybe it could be organizations who you um, care about the cause or their message. For example, the Land Workers Alliance, if you're a UK food producer, would be a great thing to be sharing their content. Um, so think about other profiles where you can share and amplify their message. And that's a good place to start with getting stories out. Um, and I'll talk a bit about content for stories as well in a little bit. Um, okay, so on to creating content. So these are just some kind of general tips. And also I'll be sharing here some more resources that you can go to for later, just to keep it time. Okay, so to save yourself time, it's really important to put hashtags on your posts. And the reason why is that, as I mentioned before, Instagram essentially acts like a search engine. So when you're putting hashtags on your posts, it gives your post opportunity to show up in other places that aren't just in front of the eyes of your followers. So if someone is following the hashtag organic food, for example, if you put the hashtag organic food in your post at the bottom of your post, then if someone's looking at that, that hashtag, then they'll find your post, it's, uh, depending on how many other people have posted in that, under, with that hashtag. Um, I'll go into that in a bit more detail here. When I share the slides, this is a link that takes you to a hashtag guide, it's a PDF that has everything you need to know about hashtags, um, as well as some uh, like places to start, some examples of hashtags you can use that I've optimized for food enterprises. So it's a good place to, to get started if you're not using them already. Always put them at the bottom of your post, never use them in the text. Um, so you might see some people are writing and then they just put hashtags in the middle of their sentence. That's not the greatest idea because it makes it harder to, to read. Um, and also for people who are um, using software who, who aren't reading, who are listening and using like software who are hard of hearing. It's an accessibility issue as well because it just sounds hideous um, when the, the software is reading out uh, the post. So also Louise from the OFN admin team every uh, Monday does a really amazing summary of social prompts on um, in the face in the thriving food hubs facebook group and i'll be showing a link in these slides as well of how to access the group if you're not already and that's really amazing because you it's it's on facebook but all of the prompts are applicable to instagram too so if you're really stuck on what to post you can always go to that on a monday and just look at what she's posted and take some inspiration from there um, so that's always a nice place um, to get started if you're stuck on a monday morning knowing what to post for the week okay so also, to save yourself time, schedule your posts in advance. If you only say have half an hour a week, um, you could spend that half an hour on a Monday morning scheduling your posts in advance. This is a link to Facebook Creator Studio. You can use Facebook Creator Studio for your Instagram, and it's a really effective tool to schedule your posts in advance. Um, and I really recommend this is the best way to be posting across both Facebook and Instagram. And it's really good to get used to this because it gets you more used to using um, Facebook and Instagram by staying within the, the social media platforms. And I am going on the next page. Here is also a webinar that I did, um, which guides you step-by-step step how to use Creator Studio. Um, so we'll, this will be in the slides for you to look at later. Just looking at time, I've only got a few more slides left, so we're okay. The other thing is make your life easier. Um, Teamwork really does make the dream work. Share responsibilities when you can for collecting content. If it's your responsibility to be doing the posting, at least draw in other members of the team or your suppliers um, to also send you content that you can use, sending images and things like that. Um, and also try and get other members of the team or volunteers to also like your posts. So you could just every, maybe every week just remind everyone it's really helpful when you like our posts it really helps it to rank better with the algorithm so that more people see it so it's like try and get as many people who are on the on the team or to to get involved with this i mean like even asking friends and family helps as well like whenever i post for like my partner's business i'm always like if it's like an important one i'll ask a couple of people who we're friends with to, to like it and it's you know, and this is one of the reasons why it's good to 
network with other hubs on the threat and like for example in the thriving food hubs facebook group and um, because it's i mean it's really helpful to have essentially like a social media squad where you're like mutually supporting each other and liking each other's posts because then that means that more of your customers will see it and i really encourage you to if there's a post that you particularly want people to like and, and share um or even just to like post it in the post a link in the in the thriving food hubs facebook group and we can kind of club together as a food movement and give each other some social love and okay another tip is what i'm what do i mean by be like yoda um, i mean here is that try and always center your customer in what you're talking about center your follower so it's like you don't want to kind of you're like don't make your food enterprise the hero in your posts be the like the wise guide or yeah like put you are the facilitator you you are the enterprise that is helping to for example if you're a food hub connect your customers with amazing fresh local produce um if you're a, a producer you know again you're like create like you're growing amazing food for people and their family so it's it's always kind of like leading by the benefits and the value that you're providing the customer rather than just like, so it's like a quick sense check of this. It's like when you're looking at your posts, are you using a lot of I's and we's? And if you are, think about how you can add some more you and yours. And it's like a little shift of like where you're talking directly to your customer, making the customer like the center of what you're posting. Um, what's the benefit to them? What's the value to them? And it's also this kind of like, you know, like you like Kyoto, it's like you're enticing your customer um, onto this like mission with you of, you know, the, the mission being um, creating and contributing to a better food movement. How can you inspire them to join you on this mission? So I hope that's kind of explained that. <laughs> I just like this, like this picture. So I've got to put something cosmic in there. Um, and the other thing is just think of sense check the three E's as well. So when you're posting something, ask yourself, is it educational, is it emotional, or is it entertaining? If it's one of these three things, you're doing great. If it's all three things, you're doing amazing. Um, and there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Educational would be, for example, your recipe posts, or if you're talking about some of the politics around being part of the better food movement and why people should care. Um, if it's emotional, that by emotional, that could just be like, you know, cute animal pictures. Um, and if it's entertaining, um, anything funny, team photos, team videos, behind the scenes, jokes, I don't know, anything here. Um, it's, it's good to kind of inject some humor into it, particularly these days when things, you know, like it's been a very heavy year, right? So if we can inject something funny or entertaining into our posts, then we're doing people a, a favor and a service online. Um, here is another webinar that I've done, um, which is a step-by-step -step of how to create branded content. Instagram is a great place um, for putting branded posts. And when Kate shares her page, she does some really great um, order cycle open posts, which are branded. And this just is a way of like adding some consistency throughout your, your page. Um, so this is a really nice idea. And what I mean by a branded post is something that has like a consistent branded theme to it. So it could be like a brand color. It could be like a type of font you always use and it could be your order cycle post that you do every week. It could be one that you do that is distinctive, which distinctively looks like your food enterprise. Um, but this, this webinar will go into that in more detail because I'm just aware of time. And my final tip is to find out what your customers love and do more of it. And you can do this going back to my original point of why you want a business profile is by checking your insights. So make, make a note of what posts do well and do more of those kinds of posts. So it's just trying to kind of show up in a way. That this is like an iterative process. The more that you post, the more that you know, the more you're going to know what your customers like on Instagram and then just keep doing more and more and more of that. Um, and ah, it's not my last slide. Okay, so the final tips is don't forget the call to action. At the bottom of every post, always put like a direction for people to go um, to always put a call to action. So on every post, it's not the same as Facebook where you don't want to be shouting at people telling them where to go. You could do a lovely post about anything and then say, if you want to shop with us week, um, this week, don't like visit the link in our bio. So it's the, the, the phrase is go to the link in our bio uh, because that's 
the link that will be active where you can encourage people to take action because in the posts links don't show up so you can actually put a link in your post like you can on facebook um and yeah be human human faces team members faces um try like yeah if you can like done is better than perfect sometimes behind the scenes shots really effective here and you know it's also don't with with the way you're writing done is better than perfect it's better to just show up imperfectly and transparently than to wait for everything to be super slick and not post at all i mean even showing up in that kind of authentic done is better than perfect way is is very human um and your followers will will appreciate that because you know more and more people are looking for more a more human touch on online so yeah that's so just have that in mind when you're thinking things have to be perfect it's almost like your followers want to see your humanity or the, the humans behind the profiles 